Making a movie sequel is a funny old business. Sure, the first film does well, rakes in a solid profit, receives good reviews and does right by audiences, but a sequel, well, it needs way more than that to be greenlit. Even when a film receives numerous accolades and becomes a great critical and commercial success, if the script, the crew and the studios aren't clicking behind the scenes for part two, well, chances are your sequel is doomed to fail. The following movie sequels found themselves on the chopping block for much more bizarre reasons than these though. Cancellations due to weird stories, character assassinations or in one exceptional case, the actual death of an unlikely co-star, these movie's successors were just not meant to be. In fact, some of the stories behind the following cancellations sound like they could be movies in their own right. So let's get to it. I am What Culture's Marcus Bronzy. Here are 10 movie sequels that were cancelled for the weirdest reasons. Number 10. Superman Lives. Ridiculous producer demands. Superman Lives was the brainchild of Tim Burton, meant as a follow-up to his previous Batman films and an early attempt to make a DC movie universe. Penned by Kevin Smith and based on the brilliant The Death of Superman comic arc, the film had Nick Cage playing the Man of Steel and was reportedly only three weeks from shooting when the project was scrapped. So. What actually happened? Well, the movie's cancellation was so obscure and complex at the time that filmmaker John Schnepp had an entire documentary created called The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, just to get to the bottom of this mystery. During interviews with various crew members and producers working on the film, Schnepp found that the movie was a shambolic mess behind the scenes. From demands for Superman to fight a giant mechanical spider, to giving Lex Luthor a space dog, a ridiculous number of script rewrites and and a lack of faith from producers and Superman fans all led to the project being canned before it could get off the ground, with the film's final rewrite from Dan Gilroy showcasing a boring and ineffective story. In the end, Warner Brothers gave up on it, citing Batman and Robin's financial losses for their lack of commitment to the film's budget as reasons for cancellation. Number 9. Roger Rabbit 2 – Too Many Nazis Scheduled for release in the mid-1990s, Roger Rabbit 2 – Toon Patrol was cancelled because of one behind-the-scenes issues involving would-be director Steven Spielberg and the film's plot. The film would have actually been a prequel to the original and it would have found Roger Rabbit attempting to save Jessica Rabbit from the Nazis during World War II whilst attempting to find his birth mother. Spielberg was not impressed with the story. Having recently released his masterpiece, Schindler's List, the director director was not interested in portraying satirical Nazis on screen and dropped out of the project. There have also been reports that the film, now directorless, would be adopting a new form of animation and it didn't sit right with the tone of the film because it was going to look too polished and refined, too far away from the original Roger Rabbit that we loved. Anyway, whatever the case, by the time Spielberg left and Disney had to give up the rights of the film to Time Warner, instead of a prequel film, we got a series of Roger Rabbit shorts. Number 8. Star Trek 4 – The Trial of James T. Kirk it was too Star trek -y. The Trial of James T. Kirk was proposed as the fourth film in the Star Trek film series following The Search for Spock. It was written as a whodunit legal drama in which Kirk was put on trial for his actions in the previous film, primarily in regards to stealing and destroying the flagship Enterprise. All told though, the film gained no traction. Paramount were not interested in making a legal drama, worried it wouldn't fit in with the tone of the Star Trek movie series, despite similar storylines being very popular in the Star Trek universe over the years. And anyway, they were more concerned with making a light-hearted picture following the casualty-heavy events of the two previous films. Soon after the trial was cancelled, Leonard Nimoy came on board to direct Star Trek The Voyage Home. Seeing the crew travel back to the 20th century was a brilliant and iconic plotline, but it's weird to think that the film actually started as a legal drama, which is far from the Star Trek's usual level of space adventure, only to end up as a time travel thriller all about about whales. Number 7. Gladiator 2 – Maximus Would Kill Jesus Yep, if there ever was a film that did not need a sequel, it would have to be Ridley Scott's 2001 Best Picture winner, Gladiator. But due to its massive success with both critics and audiences, Scott decided, hey, let's get another film written. An epic set in Rome with no gladiators and no Russell Crowe. It never came to pass. What did come to pass, though, was Crowe going out of his way to have his own script written, only with this one being a more direct sequel. Hiring musician and writer Nick Cave, Crowe wanted Maximus to come back in for the follow-up with more bloody adventures, despite having died in the previous film. The Cave sequel would have Maximus sent 
back from the afterlife to kill Jesus and all of his followers. And when he succeeds, realizing the gods have tricked him and he's only just gone and killed his own son. Because of this sin, Maximus is doomed to life as an eternal warrior forced to fight in every major conflict in history. Crow read it. And despite Cave saying that this was a stone cold masterpiece, well, he ended their relationship right there. Probably for the best. Number six, E.T. 2. Nocturnal Fears The script was about alien torture. Remember how lovely E.T. Extraterrestrial was? It was a family-friendly classic, a landmark in cinema history, and one of Steven Spielberg's best ever films. The proposed sequel was going to be nothing like this. Written as a direct follow-up to the beloved original, E.T. Nocturnal Fears would have seen Elliot and some friends abducted by evil aliens intent on performing experiments on them. Desperate to escape, Elliot must break free and contact E.T. for help. Not winning any awards for its cheeriness, Spielberg was deeply troubled by the script, which he said was graphic in its depictions of torture and distress. He later said that E.T. was not a film in need of a sequel and that making it would have robbed the original of its virginity. For what it's worth, I think it's safe to say that moviegoers would agree and this scrap sequel, well, it might be one of the biggest bullet dodges in Hollywood. Number five, Matilda the Professional. Natalie Portman needed to be older. Who said that cinema was a cutthroat industry, eh? After the success of the cult classic Leon the Professional, a sequel was proposed which would take place years after the original, following Matilda, played by Natalie Portman, as she becomes a hired killer. There were a number of reasons why this film never came to be. First off, the film company didn't want to make it until Portman was a little bit older. But the biggest factor came from Luke Besson, who had recently founded his own production company called Europa Corp, and he wanted to use them to create the sequel. Unfortunately, Besson's decision decision to make it with his own production company didn't sit well with the studios and led to him losing his rights to the sequel. Years later, the spec script for the film was rewritten to become an action thriller Colombiana, starring Zoe Saldana as a vengeful assassin. There are still rumours about Portman eventually returning to the role, but nothing has come to fruition just yet. Number 4. Anchorman 2 – Ron Burgundy the musical. Living proof that Hollywood doesn't know a good thing when it slaps them in the face, Will Ferrell and Adam McKay began thinking about a sequel to their original comedy classic around 2008, and their idea was to make the follow-up a musical. Both Will Ferrell and McKay became deeply invested in the idea of writing down the story and even writing some songs. Co-stars Paul Rudd and Steve Carell also got involved, stating their excitement with the project, but the whole thing would have ended up costing too much for Paramount to take the risk, and it was scrapped. Of course, Anchorman 2 eventually came out in 2013, though it wasn't a musical. It was, however, a rousing success and proof that a musical starring Ferrell, Rudd and the like would have been absolutely spectacular. Number 3. The Amazing Spider-Man Sequels Taken Out by Some Leaked Emails after the messy, amazing Spider-Man 2, it was reported that there would be two more films in the series, with Andrew Garfield coming back to continue to hold the mantle of the titular hero Peter Parker, aka your friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. But before everything went up in flames, the films were already struggling to gain traction, with the series of poor scripts being brought to the table and uncertainty over who would direct. The final nail in the coffin came in 2014 after the infamous Sony hacks led to plans for the sequels being leaked to the public. The third film, for example, would have seen the return of Paul Giamatti's Rhino and the resurrection of Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy. Due to the leak, Sony scrapped the project in its entirety and they also stated that Garfield was too old for the role. Internally, they were actually quite annoyed by his offset behaviour and that they wanted to revamp the character with a younger actor. This led to Tom Holland's eventual casting and Spider-Man integration into the MCU with Captain America's Civil War, which ended up being a brilliant creative decision in the long run. Number 2. Mrs. Doubtfire 2 the script was a bit too creepy. Mrs. Doubtfire remains one of Robin Williams' most beloved and best remembered films, a movie which perfectly captured the late comic's hyperactive energy, immeasurable likability and willingness to challenge himself. Being the success that it was, the sequel was greenlit in hopes of bringing Williams back and giving the fans some more chaotic but bittersweet adventures. The original script called for Daniel to follow his daughter Lydia to college disguised as the means of keeping an eye on her. Williams was a little bit troubled about the storyline though, he found the whole scenario a bit creepy and out of character and due to persistent issues with rewriting the film, 
it never came to be. According to Williams, the movie went through three equally ineffective rewrites, so the sequel was scrapped by 2007. And since Williams' untimely death in 2014, the possibility of a sequel has been totally squashed, as it's fair to say that without Williams, the film would simply never work. Based on the story that they had in mind for it though, it's probably for the best. Number 1. The Bodyguard 2 – Princess Diana's Death the Bodyguard came out in 1992, starring Kevin Costner as the bodyguard of the famous singer Rachel Maron, played by Whitney Houston, whom he falls in love with. It's a timeless classic and effective drama, and Costner has gone on record in recent years to say that a sequel was in works with none other than Princess Diana. Yes, the beloved Princess Diana of Wales was apparently in negotiations to play a key role in the romantic thriller's follow-up. According to Costner, he first received the script for the film shortly before Diana's tragic death and that thanks to Sarah Ferguson, he had been put in touch with the princess to discuss her possible involvement. She had been apprehensive about the romance in the film, which would have rather tragically seen her protected from the paparazzi and stalkers before falling in love with Costner. Of course, Princess Diana's death put an end to the film, and since Costner's revelation, her involvement in the sequel has slipped into cinema lore. So, there you go. 10 of the weirdest and also tragic reasons that movie sequels were cancelled. Know any more? Well, let us know in the comments. We'd be happy to pop them in a future vid. And of course, give us a sub and a like while you're at it as well. You can find us on Twitter at What's Culture. And of course, you can find me on the gram as well at Marcus Bronzy. M A R C U S B R O N Z Y. Until next time.